How you doing, Vineyard Kids? It's your old pal, Pastor Chris, with another edition of the Big God Story. We are in the midst of a memory verse that we have been learning over the last several weeks. This is week three of John chapter 17, verse three. Take a look, read it together with me at home. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, verse 3. Today we're going to look at a great story that Jesus told to illustrate the Father's love, which is our take-home. I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about at the end right now, and that is that God loves you. The story is found in Luke chapter 15, and we pick it up in verses 11 and 12. Follow along. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided the property between them. Now already, if you think back to last week, you know what we found? We found the word inheritance. And inheritance is something that someone leaves for us, something that someone gives to us after they pass away very often that we haven't earned. It's not ours, but someone thought enough of us to give it to us. This is the story of the prodigal son. Very often that's what it's called. And the son in the story comes to his father and says, Father, I want my share now. I know you're not dead. I know you haven't passed on, but I want my share now. And the father does what the son asks. Let's continue. Verse 13. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. This kid took the money that his father had given him, took the stuff maybe in his room, all of his other possessions that mattered to him, and he took off to another country to live the life he had always dreamed to live. Now, I would imagine that the dream that he had in his head was pretty fantastic, right? I mean, he was going to spend time doing all the things a young man wanted to do in the world, and he had money with which to do it. It was going to be fantastic. Except that when you spend money irresponsibly, it doesn't last very long. And that is what happened to this young man, the prodigal son. Let's continue the story. Verses 15 and 16. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Now, if you had it in your head, that with a certain amount of money and with your earthly possessions that you could head on down the road and live the life you've always wanted to live, that would seem pretty great. Until you found out that it doesn't always work out that way. That's what happened to this young prodigal here. He spent all of his money. He had no money with which to live. He had no job at this moment. And so he went to a man in the town, in the country where he was, and he asked for a job feeding pigs. It's all he could get. And the man graciously hired him to feed the pigs. But the young man, the prodigal son, thought long and hard about eating the food that the pigs ate just so that he would have something to fill his belly. Things weren't exactly working out the way the prodigal son expected. Let's continue our story. In verses 17 through 19 of Luke chapter 15, it says this, When he, the young man, came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. This young man who had so much hope for a better life with the money that his dad gave him and the stuff that he took with him decided it was better to go home and be a servant 
than it was to remain where he was and be completely isolated and miserable. And so he went home. What he didn't know, however, see, he was rehearsing over and over in his head, I'm going to go home and I'm going to ask my dad if he will hire me as one of his servants. But what he didn't know is that every day this young man, this prodigal son, was away from his father. His father would go out and would look for his son. And so the father was looking hopeful. The father was looking in anticipation. The father wanted nothing more than to be able to see that son come around the corner, come over the hill, come into his view. And then one day, it happened. Let's pick up the story right here. Luke 15, 28. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. Now, you thought I missed a part, didn't you? Let's come right back to it. The father was waiting every day to see his son. The son decided against all odds that he was going to go home and ask his father to be a servant. And when they met each other, when they saw each other once again, the father came running to the son. They embraced, and it was a beautiful picture. Father loved son. Son loved father. Everybody was happy, except for the older brother. You see, this prodigal son's brother had been there the whole time. He had been doing the work of both of them. There had been a lot of responsibility that's been placed on the young, on the older brother. And now all of a sudden, the younger brother comes home after he took the money and ran, after he had a mess of his life. He comes home, and instead of being put in his place, instead of being punished, instead of being made a servant like he had asked, he was reinstated as part of the family, and the older brother was angry. He didn't like the fact that the younger brother was going to get off without even a slap on the wrist. In fact, the father killed the fattened calf. They had a great meal. They put a ring on his finger and they put a cloak on his back. They made the younger brother look like he was the world's greatest son, not someone who had just come back from riotous living and wasting money. So let's continue the story. Verses 31 and 32. My son, the father said, this is to the older son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Now, before we finish up our story together, we're going to summarize what we've learned thus far take a look at this. There once was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So the father divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him into the fields to feed his pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son then said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father called to his servants, Quick! Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called to one of his servants and asked him, What's going on? 
Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he's returned safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father. All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has wasted your property comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him? My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Who do you think represents the father in this story? God, right? What about the brothers? Really, either one of them. Who do the brothers represent? You and me. I mean, some of us want what we want. We want it now and we want to go live our own life and do things our own way, right? That's the younger brother. That's the prodigal son. Others of us will we'll, we'll do exactly what we're supposed to do. We do our best to toe the line, but we don't like when we see injustice. When we see somebody not getting punished for things they deserve to be punished for, it frustrates us a little bit. And then on top of that, to celebrate my brother, there's just no cause for that. So the older brother, the younger brother, both with some flaws, both trying to do well, what makes the father happy? One did it all the time. One left for a long time and then came back and just wanted to be reinstated as a servant. But the beauty of this story is simple. God, the father, is love. You see, the father loved the prodigal son, even though he took all the money, even though he took all the possessions, even though he went and spent the money on riotous living, even though he went and left his family in a lurch, even though he went to a far country and ended up making a mess of his life, the father still loved him. The father also still loved the older son. In fact, he said so. He said, everything that I have now is yours. You have been with me this entire time, but... The father loved the older son, even as the older son struggled, crossed his arms, got angry over the fact that the younger son returned and wasn't treated any less than he was. God loves the jealous brother. God loves the wasteful brother. God loves the angry brother. And God loves the poor decision-making brother. God loved them both. And the lesson I want you to take home today is that God, the Father, is love. He loves you no matter what. He loves your family. He loves your friends. In fact, John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever would believe in him wouldn't perish, wouldn't die but have everlasting life, eternal life. That's a great, great promise. Like the son in the story, we all make choices we regret. But how grateful can we be that the Father loves us no matter what? We should always try to do our best. We should try to avoid sin. In fact, the Bible says we should try to avoid even the appearance of evil but we absolutely can know that even if God has to punish us, it is always, always, always while he's loving us. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you for this time. We ask your blessing on the rest of our day today and the rest of our week. And God, we thank you that you are a God of love. But we also thank you for the hope that is found in the fact that even when we mess up, your love doesn't waver. You love us even in our sinfulness. Father, your word says all have sinned and fall short. And so we are grateful that you love us in spite of our sin. But we also pray that you would help us to do the very, very best we can to honor you completely and fully. To make the right choices, to do the right things, to love one another just as you have loved us. Help us to do that this week, we pray. 
and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.